And I would, you know, you drip it in and it gets a little bit red and then it reacts and the red goes away, right? You want it to go back and forth from red to clear, you know what I mean? You don't want it so fast that you flood the, the reaction with a bunch of bromine. You want it to react as, it go, as it's dripped in, kind of. At least that's my guess. Uh, like I said, keep it below 10 Celsius. Uh, even if you have to stop the reaction, you know what I mean? Let's say your reaction is getting to 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, then you stop putting the bromine in. You know what I mean? You wait. Wait for the pot to cool back down to, you know, zero degrees or, you know, two or three degrees Celsius, five, even five degrees Celsius. So then you turn your bromine back on dripping. You know what I mean? So you have, you know, it has time to heat up but not be above 10 degrees Celsius. Now, this is a one-to-one -one ratio on the bromine and the acetone. But I would probably put in more acetone than bromine. Uh, the reason why is because you might have the bromine, it can only attach one time on the side of the on the side of the on the side of the carbonyl. But it could also show up on here on this side. You know, you can only get one addition on this side, but you can get one addition on this side too. I'm guessing. So what I would do is I would add, you know, 1.1 molecules of acetone compared to one molecule of bromine, or maybe even one and a half times more acetone than the bromine. Maybe even twice as much. I don't know. But I would definitely add some more acetone so that the bromine can find an acetone and not a bromoacetone to add to. Okay. When you're done, you might want to wash it with some water to get out the uh, so any sulfuric acid that's in there. Now I'm guessing that bromoacetone is not that soluble in water. It's only slightly soluble, I bet. So what I would do when I was done was I would put some water in here, right? Throw it into the set funnel and maybe put a little bit of uh, ether in there. I'll probably use DCM, dichloromethane. Uh, the reason why is I like to link the density up from my product and my solvent. But what I mean by that is this. If I use diethyl ether, right, to pull out my product, <coughs> diethyl ether is less dense than water, so it will float on top. Whereas DCM is more dense than water, so it will float on the bottom. Okay, so how do I know which one I would like to choose? And it really doesn't matter. They probably both do just as good of a job, but I still like to do this. I, I can't not do this. It just doesn't seem right to do it the other way. So anyways, my point is this. Oh, my product, okay, right, the brown oil acetone, is more dense than water. So if I just put it into water, it should sink at the bottom, okay? So I want to use the solvent that sinks at the bottom. And between ether, diethyl ether, and uh, dichloromethane, right, DCM, DCM is more dense. So I want to choose it because I want them both to be both dense. You know what I mean? That way they match up. Both the product and the solvent, DCM, both are more dense than water. And that's why I, show, I would rather use DCM if I had a choice, although ether will still work. So that it forms two layers. You know what I mean? Depending on what you make. I mean, if you make enough of this, then it'll form its own layer that you can see. You know what I mean? Um, but it couldn't hurt to throw in a little guy at the ether just to make, the, make it easier to extract. And use your set funnel and separate off the water. The water can take out the, any acetone that's in there. The water can take out, uh, and use cold water. It could take out uh, any bromine in there, although that should be all used up because you have more acetone than bromine. Um, but the water should take out a lot of impurities. Now, I was thinking about washing this, like when you were completely done and you wanted to wash it with water to get the sulfuric acid out and the acetone out. I was also thinking of a second wash with sodium bicarbonate. 
you know, eight ways sodium bicarbonate. But I don't know if that would be enough to start doing reactions with this. You know, because you can have uh, sodium hydroxide water and change its bromine into a, a hydroxy group, like an alcohol. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if bicarbonate might do that, or if it would just do it so slow that it wouldn't matter, you know, because it's not like you're going to wash it for three days. You know, you're going to wash it for like 15, 20 minutes. Um, so, I don't know. You might be able to use bicarbonate. That way you can... Uh, do the uh, you can neutralize the sulfuric acid if any's in there. But you're putting such a little bit in there, and admittedly you're going to make some during the reaction. So you do want to do if you do a cold wash and that's it, do a couple of them. You know what I mean? Do maybe three cold washes, cold, cold water wash. Make sure you get all the acetone and sulfuric acid, etc., out of there. Now this thing can link up together, and you know like an aldol uh, reaction um, or an aldol condensation reaction or, you know what I mean, it can link up with this with the bromine on it to another acetone or, you know, there's a lot of impurities. <coughs> Hopefully most of it will be this though. So now you have all your, at least all your ionic stuff or polar stuff out of there, right, from your separation. You should just have ether, this bromoacetone and your other hydrocarbon impurities, okay? I would uh, dry this maybe with some anhydrous salt or molecular sieves, and then I would distill it, okay? It boils at 137C. I'm not sure if it had, forms an uh, azeotrope with uh, water. But if you dry it up first, it shouldn't be a problem. And then uh, that's it. You threw your anhydrous soda, you left the sieves in it, and you dried it, filtered it, distilled it. That's all you can do. Um, that's pretty much it. That's my guess. Now, one of the nice things about alpha bromination is if you use ethyl methyl ketone, butanone, instead of uh, acetone, you can make this product, mix it with pyridine. <laughs> and get an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. You might say, what good is that? Well, now you can do some micro-reactions, like a 1,4 uh, addition, where you can add to the terminal end of this. It's, you know, usually you'd add to it right here because it's more substituted. But on here, because of resonance, you can add to the end of the, you know, the end of the hydrocarbon. And uh, basically that's it. And I think that's called a 1 4 Michaels reaction, I'm not sure. Or a 1 4 addition reaction. Anyways, you all have a great day, and always remember science is great.